So recording is started. I'll just be a minute or so. I'm looking for something to talk about. And then last time we didn't actually go over Winston, right? We went over supports. So you went over Brink and Zen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So this will be some new stuff. Yes, it had mostly to do with my position in the fights, as well as ability to jump break, and some decision making in terms of ulting and such things. Yeah, on, I was glancing over the notes. It looked like we said mechanics was the number one, the number one thing to work on yeah, as well. Yeah, and, and when to fire where and how yep. to aim. And mm -hmm. that's the well. I've been practicing that, and I've been getting better at it. At least I've been getting mixed results at the very. Mm -hmm. All right. Good dive. Okay, pretty good fight. Yes. I've been trying a lot more lately to incorporate the sidelines of enemies. In this race, the Bastion was up there, so if I hide them down here, I can contest the point and force at least someone down. Yep. Let's see first what they have. Okay. That's huge. Uh, I should not be using my ult here. I did not let you check the kill feed. You're fine. You're gone. Uh, one you've gone, but you're... Yeah, there we go. Alright. Make sure that we're watching Bastion's dead body there. Oh, right. Mercy. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. You got the Mercy res, and then that... You know, we get to stop that free res if we're paying attention to it. Pog Mercy. I think this is a good time to vacate the premises. Nope, because it's overtime. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah. So it is. Yep, so make sure we're keeping our ears and eyes open, right? Pay attention to the top of our screen, and then also get, you know, like audio notifications when it's overtime and whatnot. So we yeah. want to make sure that we are paying attention to those, and then that changes our decision making. Um, yes. Additionally, you spotted it real well there, just making sure that we're paying attention to kind of where's our team when we're going in primaling, because we did go in kind of primal when we didn't really have our team near us to help out but make sure you're watching the dead body and then additionally the last time did we discuss target priority at all we did to a degree did a uh, degree to be yeah i have a lack in some regards sometimes i notice that i have really well and sometimes it's just like that's mm. tank i'm gonna hit that and that's not really yeah what I so so we went over it did, did we go over it in depth or do we just kind of glaze over it or glazed over it like glazed it was mentioned it. and we went into it a little bit but not a lot all right so we'll go into it a lot after this then um okay. so we'll, we'll wait till the game's over and then we'll go into that so since we have some time here before the round starts uh how have things been going since last time then go back going good bad you said you had a rough spot during the week uh no that's not that's not to do with the game oh, that was outside of the game all right mm -hmm. um no in terms of the game i found a group of friends to play with a new group of people is always nice uh yeah, although i do think that's going to prevent me from climbing looking at some of their play styles mm -hmm. outside of that i noticed my own performance be at least improved whether nice. it's significant or not depends on game to game basis consistency mm -hmm. isn't there yet. yeah okay and then did you have any questions before we you know got any more uh of the previous ones uh no not so much i'm actually pretty happy with my break games and zen games of the past couple of days okay mm -hmm. or just like you know if you had any questions about monkey or anything of that sort okay ah uh, that's Go out. All right. Make sure we're just watching our health bar there and paying attention to just how many like of them are on top of us because we could have left out there at any point and we just didn't. All right. So we just got to keep our eye on our health bar and our danger level so we know when to be getting out. If 
All right, so in that situation, did we swap targets because we were trying to go for the visoring soldier? Yeah, I wanted to knock. I wanted to hopefully knock him out before he managed to do too much damage, mm -hmm. but I didn't go okay. right now. Otherwise, it would have been fine to stay on the Mora, I guess. Like, she could get out with Fate most likely, but it's still proc Fate, which is good. Yeah. Additionally there, when you're doing a bunch of group damage to their whole team, you might have been better off waiting the Primal until you were low HP, right? And using it to just stay alive and sustain in the fight, rather than immediately Primaling as soon as you got it available. Hey, he's fine, he's down. Else. All right. Okay, so I'll have a couple things to review here. So I'm going to be streaming if you'd like to take a look, and we'll go over a couple different things. Okay, so um, let's see. Firstly, let's go in depth on target priority since we said we do that. So when it comes to target priority, right, and what we should be shooting at, we essentially want to be shooting at the easiest targets to kill, right? Because those are going to be the things that we can actually secure, and the things that we can actually kill are the easiest targets to kill. In general, there's other aspects that go into target priority, but that's the main basic core one. Um, now, in terms of who's easiest to kill, the answer to that is usually not tanks. Tanks have two to three times the health of other characters. They have shields. They have tanking abilities. They a lot, a lot of them have high mobility. They have armor. Very, very difficult characters to kill. Therefore, you usually don't want to spend too much time chasing after them. And that's not to say that we never shoot at tanks, right? We shoot at them when they're low, when they're out of position, when they're the only thing we can shoot at, right? We don't have the option to shoot at something else, right? Like, so for example, if you have a 500 HP Orisa, right? It's a little bit different if she's, you know, 10 HP because now she's easier to kill than a 200 HP soldier, right? Um, yeah. So that changes the scenario. And then even uh, within the other characters, right supports and dps there are going to be easier and harder things to kill right so you can take a look and think who's going to be easier to kill a anna or a tracer anna yep Anna's like anna has more tools to to offensively deal with me and to mitigate the damage i can do but tracer has just straight reset and just can get away easy yeah so yeah anna would be much easier to kill right all you have to do is just you know dodge out her abilities with bubble and then she's a free kill whereas tracer can just blink away from you and then you can't do anything there right um then you could take a look at let's say who's easier to kill hanzo or lucio uh hanzo yep hanzo is much easier to kill less doesn't have self-healing doesn't have mobility right so even with those within those other characters we still have kind of hierarchy of who's the easiest, hardest to kill. So whenever you're in a game, you probably want to come up with like a list in your head, right? The moment you see their team comp, you want to just real quick press tab, take a look at it, go, okay, this is the easiest person, this is the hardest person, and just go through that list. And then that way you have a kind of that in your head of who should I be focusing. So there were a couple times, particularly we can think to like the first time we're primaling on second point of attack, right? Yeah. When we got nanoed, we spent probably Probably like half of that primal just primaling in Arissa who is gold, right? And then that meant that we wasted most of our ultimate on a character that's much, much more difficult to kill than some other characters, right? Um, so yeah, that's target priority. Making sure we're shooting at the right things is going to do a lot for us. Now, additionally, let's talk over some different jump text, um, as I'm not sure that I saw us doing a couple of them. Now, you might know them if you've watched like tech I videos. Have videos yes yeah so are you aware of how to short jump uh so yes and no i get it in theory i'm just having trouble putting it into practice yeah so in theory right and in, in, in hopefully in practice right is all you have to do to short jump is just hold s when you jump right so you just backspace when you jump so if you need to just start walking backwards jump and then you short jump right yeah. so it's yeah. as simple as that all you have to do is just hold s jump and then you short jump Okay. Yep. Then yeah. going for longer jumps, right? Just to reiterate, just in case, as reminders, or if you have, if you already seen them, yeah, this is normal jump. Okay, mark that. 
You can get extra distance just by looking up, which you probably are aware of, right? Of course, that gets you further. Additionally, if you hold the space bar, that will give you a bounce. So if we just do our normal jump and then hold the space bar, we're going to get a bounce, which will get us extra distance. And then you'll also get a little bit of extra distance and a little bit of extra height if you jump before you leap. Okay, so you jump and then leap and look up and hold space bar, and then that gets you even further, right? So, the, I think especially the main one is that, that gets you a little bit of extra height to work with, is, is the big one there. Um, that's about it for that. You can also just, like, look straight up if you're trying to, like, for example, if you're trying to either prolong your survivability and let yourself stay. For example, like, if you feel like you're under a lot of pressure and you want to relieve some of that pressure and you're trying to just land and do some damage straight on top of where you're standing, you can leap straight up in the air. And then just land straight there, and then that does some extra damage. It give, puts you out of the fight for a second or two. Means that you're t taking a little bit less damage and whatnot. Now, um, additionally, let's see, where were... I had one more thing. Oh, yeah, okay, so we're going to go over soft diving versus hard diving. These terms you have heard at all? Yes, I have. And yes, I have practiced it as well in that game. Where uh, mm -hmm. Soft jumping is jump in there not committing bubble and stuff and immediately dropping down as like you've done a little bit of damage and you drop down just to cause a little bit of chaos kind of thing. Yeah. So you can use bubble even when soft diving, right? That's not a it's not a necessity that you, you, uh, you it can go either way. You can not use it. You can use it. Not, not a necessity. The difference between the two would just be hard diving is you're committing to trying to get a kill and you're going in super aggressive versus soft diving, which is a lot more passive and your objective is to do damage, create chaos, like you said, get ult charge and uh, create space for your teammates, right? That's the, that's the main pri objective. So um, main thing I would say is a big difference between the two is you can soft dive while using leap, but in a lot of cases, when you soft dive, you're not using leap. So I, I'd say the difference, the, the, the factor that mainly affects this is if you are um, soft diving up to a high ground, you can use jump because for example, like let's say on that bastion, Hey, if we want to soft dive the, them, all we have to do is just leap up there, Tesla a little bit, drop bubble, and then once we feel pressured, we just drop back down and then we're safe, right? That's a yeah. soft dive. Um, whereas in most other situations, we c usually you're going to soft dive without using your leap. That way you have leap as an escape option. Here in this case, the escape option is just dropping. But if you're in the middle of them, a lot of times that you don't have that escape option, instant escape, escape option. So your escape option is your leap. And sometimes we would engage with our leap in situations where we should have been soft diving. And then that meant that we just didn't have leap to get away. So an example of that is just at the very start of our defense. We dropped to the low ground. We went through that little tiny tunnel on the left room and then we leapt, which means that if they kill us within that next five seconds, we just have no way to get away. Right. So yeah. that's just dangerous for us to be doing. Keep your eye on that. It's, you know, good, good thing that you have a, a concept of the two. Just make sure we're understanding, like, you know, when do I use both? Making sure that we're usually going to not be using our, our leap if we're soft diving so that we have it as the escape option. Um, and then for now, I think that's about it. Uh, did you want to go over a replay? Like, I want to uh, personally, because especially now that you're mentioning soft diving versus hard diving. I would love to go over the start of that game because there are a couple of moments where hopefully I can showcase that I do understand the concept and I am trying to implement it for more. Yeah. Because there's moments in there where I just sit on that high ground on the bridge in Anubis, mm -hmm. wait for the tanks to appear on our side and then drop down below to kill their mercy and then start harassing mm -hmm. the Moira, but their frontline oh. is committed to the high front. Mm -hmm. And that worked out really well. All right. Uh, and then, if there's still time after that, I also have a part of a Numbani game that I'm interested in looking okay. back on. Works with me. Career profile. Replay. I also think I, at some point in this conversation, I need to talk about my primal because I understand the concept and I have looked videos on it as well. Mm -hmm. I struggle very hard to get any really good kill value or like uh, hostile value, if that makes better sense. Yeah. Do, do you think so? Yeah, so, you know, I, I think you maybe got a couple of general concepts. Like, one thing I would say is, like, in a lot of cases, not in all cases, but in a lot of cases, Primal can be used um, as the get-out-of-jail-free card. So, like, even you want to be forcing that. So, for example, right, like, if you have a group of, like, four people sitting on top of each other, right, 
you're mm -hmm. probably going to be doing more damage by Tesla-ing all four of them than primaling, and then because you're once you start primaling or booping them all around, you're not going to be able to hit f those four people with primal over and over and over and over again because they're all going to be spread out, right? Once you start primaling, right? So what that means is that if you that what you'd want to do is you'd want to get aggressive, get in there, do that cleave damage with all of with your weapon until they pressure you and they get you down. And you can play super aggressive because you know you have that get out of jail free card. Then once you get low, then you can primal afterwards. And your objective should be to, if you don't have a map, if you don't have an edge to boop them off, and you don't have, you know, a bomb to boop them into, and you don't have a team to boop them into, then your objective is just to uh, isolate and kill, right? So your objective is to put them into a corner or, you know, find an edge, put them into that corner and juggle them. Yeah, and just keep them dead, right? Soft dive. I Go on. I believe you noticed that on the Moira as well when I swapped to the Visoring Soldier when I had the Moira yeah. in the corner and I swapped mm -hmm. over for her and that yeah. decision making that you questioned was yeah it was for the Visor to hopefully try and prevent it doing too much damage yeah but it was mm -hmm. yeah in that situation you might be better finishing off the Moira because it's questionable whether or not you'd be able to kill the soldier who's being pocketed by a Mercy and is you know you booping him around with Visor might even help him out a little bit <laughs> in some I cases. Was, this as well as so I was like, I don't know if I should, where I should book him because if I put him backwards into the team that I thought was, would still be alive, I'm just going to give him target priority to yeah. everything. Another thing that can probably help a lot with your primaling is actually the um, the short uh, dives, right? The, the short jumps. Because yeah. when you primal and you do a long jump, right? So let, let's boop him and then do a regular jump. We leap past the person, right? But if we boop yeah. him and then do a short jump, well, we now we are on the person, right? So let's look. Right. Oh, it ran out. Short jump. Right. And then we're on top of the person. Right. So short jumps actually gonna help a lot with your with your juggling as well. Your ability to stay on them. Whereas if you just go for a regular leap, you're gonna just go sailing past the person, and then it becomes very difficult to actually kill them. Right. Yeah, I noticed it as well. Whereas like I really struggle with finding the right way to use primal offensively, and that is part of it. Whereas I don't feel like I I can comfortably stick on targets. Mm -hmm. Yep. Short jumping is gonna short drastically jump. help with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. All right, I am streaming. I think, still? Yeah, no, I'm still watching. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I think you joined at the minute mark of 2 minute 30 when both teams had two points. That's when you joined watching this game. I joined uh, at, you said, I joined when? The 2 minute 20-ish mark on the third round. So when both of teams had already had a go at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I should have done this before we started. <laughs> so then now they know some of them should know that I'm okay, but they thankfully don't. Mm -hmm. So here we're, we maybe delayed a, a tiny little bit before we're dropping. Um, you know, we probably could be use we could be dropping and doing things probably like any point from like here on out we could be doing. Um, just getting in there, doing damage, just making it hard for them to cross and whatnot, split them up. That can give your team more time to shoot at them when they're trying to get across, right? Like if we, for example, like we let the tanks walk through and then we drop on their squishies. Well, now that separates them and it makes it easy for easier for our team to shoot at them, which is, you know, the job of a tank to create space, which is space to shoot at them, right? Um, yeah. So here we could just be dropping. We do wait a minute. Now it's not terrible. It just could be maybe going in like two or three seconds earlier. Okay, good. Finishing off of the kill here. Now, let's like, oh, I am paused, whoopsie. Let's rewatch that real quick. Um, in this situation, you probably don't want to be directly chasing behind her because we want to predict that she's going to be flying away. So if we think she's going to be flying away, Positioning wise, instead of chasing from behind her, we want to probably be in front of her because that makes it so that we can shoot at her for longer, right? Because if we're behind her and she flies away, we just go, oh no, and she flies away and she runs out of her beam range. Whereas if we're right here and she flies, then we can track her through the air and then that actually probably could kill her without us needing to use jump. Right, because look at her health bar here. We're, we trail from behind and then she flies away when she's like 1 HP. If we were just a, just a smidge further forwards on the right side of her we probably could finish her without needing to use a, a jump yeah i remember watching a video where you coached another winston where you said like you should not use your jump before she flies because then you can use your jump to chase her yes mm -hmm. 
That's yep. why I was practicing here. Whereas, like, I was yep. patiently waiting with the jump. Not like again, not a bit, not a major thing. Just a tiny little efficiency thing. Just you know, uh, not a big problem. Uh, it's a good thing you got the kill. You use the jump to chase him. Oh, there we could probably uh, even use our jump to finish off the the. Or whatever the roadhog remembering that our jump does do damage as well so leaping after him can kill him yeah the only reason i opt out of jumping as often to try and do damage in that situation is because i don't feel comfortable being able to land ahead and i then give up my potential escape option uh yeah it's not necessarily even a big escape option within the room right because you can't really jump out of the room and if you see that the roadhog is one hp and I'm pretty sure he already used his heat self heal. Then you leaping to towards him gets you closer and finishes off the kill instantly, right? So I'd say it's a, it's definitely a very useful option when you're on top of the person and you use it to finish them off in like a one v one, right? Now if I you good the rebirth because I saw the reaper that come in like yeah. One hour, so I think sure. I think we could have even like in that situation I'm mo most because I think definitely yeah you should, probably should be backing out after you see the reaper, but I think we probably had time yeah, to do it yeah. before we even saw the reaper teleporting. I agree. I agree. Yeah. All right, let's rewatch this for a second because I didn't see it. Um, all right, so we peek. All right, we run out jumps at us. Possibly could have uh, gone earlier on the when Roadhog wasn't like right next to us there. Like maybe on those other people that were walking through. Probably, yeah. Alright. Oh, who's we'll the enemy? I didn't mean to go backwards there, but Hanzo jumps up on Hanzo. Probably could leap after and help the Hanzo like 1v2 the Reaper as an option there. Um, just because that would potentially save your, like, if you see that he's on your Hanzo, that potentially saves your Hanzo, right? Because you get plop a bubble down for him and that allows your Hanzo to kill him. And then 2v1ing is a much greater chance of winning that, that duel versus a, you know, a Reaper on top of your Hanzo, right? Which your Hanzo probably is going to have a difficult time winning that duel. Yeah, that's right. I did not think about that. I just thought as Reaper up there, that's not the guy I want yeah. to confront on my own. And I did yeah. not look that there was also a Hanzo from my side. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Um, note that we're jumping and leaping in when we're 200 HP. Keep your eye on that. Um, that just is going to be very dangerous and probably could lead to us dying. We also drop bubble a little early, which means that it goes behind us and we have to run back into it. All right. So now we do get primal time, but... Yeah, let's take a look at that this. Is it winnable? I was, yeah, I was winnable. trying to get damage done so that I could get primal because yeah. I knew I was not mm -hmm. Yep, though, just note that in that time, we probably could have, again, we could have possibly died before we even got primal because we're, you know, 15% away. And here, all Soldier needs to do is just run at us and we're dead. But instead, he, he just sits here and shoots out a bubble, right? <laughs> and, that, and then he, yeah. Uh, yeah, so if he if he did a little bit better shield dancing with you, he probably could have killed you. Yeah, I would have died. Okay, notice here how we focus the tanks, right? They're, they're what we're looking at, and then we just go through most of our primal, not really accomplishing very much, right? We're just kind of booping them around. We didn't really look to particularly boop them into a corner, and I also don't notice us leap. I think we leap once there, we leap twice here, and then we just kind of walk at them from there on out, right? Yeah, so that's my issue, where it's like I don't feel comfortable jumping yeah. in primal because I feel like I overshoot it and then lose mm -hmm. track of Yep, so then short jumping is going to significantly help with that because one, you're going to be able to reach them sooner, which allows you to get more value out of Primal, but then also it means that you're doing a lot more extra damage, right? If you're leaping every other second, because it's leaping every other second. Is, damage. I think yeah. landing them to 50 if you hit it squarely on. Uh, I'm actually not sure the exact name. That sounds about right, yeah. yeah. Um, something along those lines, right? And if you're doing that consistently, right, then that adds up, that adds up right? Especially if you, if you have someone pinned in a corner. Yeah, I tried to just bubble so that I he could not be healed easily, as well as trying to isolate yeah. him from the fight, body blocking him effectively. Mm -hmm. Yep, fine bubble. Okay, nice skill. Nice skill. Watch about getting aggressive at 120 HP. Yep, good job. Request healing, then it'll just let your supports know you need healing faster. Good habit to get into is just pressing that button. Hey, I notified the team that there was still a Reaper behind us, and then we got some backup, but I did eventually end up leaving because, like, a close quarters fight with a Reaper is not something I can win. 
Mm-hmm. That's something I can actually help him survive if I go in there. There probably could have left on the soldier a lot sooner. <laughs> right, like we kind of like slowly, slowly, slowly. Like we could have left on there. We could right here just... And so I didn't leave the first time because there was a bridge there. And as you've noticed, I have been struggling and trying to identify more spots that I can easily jump. Because I do tend to sometimes jump into the doorways and stuff and that kind of gets short. Yeah, so here, so here you would you would didn't jump because of this right in front above you. No, 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 okay. in front of me where the soldier was. The bridge. Yeah, well, yeah. here he's in front of the bridge, right? So we could just leap immediately, and then br- the bridge wouldn't really stop us, right? Um, if we're in front of the bridge. Now, after the bridge, all we'd have to do is just make sure that we're not angling upwards, because if we angle upwards, then we're going to hit the bridge. We could also do a short jump, which would make it so that we're not leaping, you know straight into the bridge if, we, if we're going to go too far. Here as well, we could also leap over the bridge and just land smack dab on top of his head is another option, right? So we have a bunch of options there to get to him faster. We could also leap here just a second sooner. So just very delayed and then just you know note that during that time there were delayed shooting soldiers, time where we can't really shoot at other things. We're watching the Mercy. All right. Um, how easy is it to kill a Valky Mercy? Well, I thought that was also shots on her being fired from other people because she already was chunking way more than I was doing damage to her. So I was hoping that my assistance damage would have got her to stop and that would also eliminate an ult from the fight. So, you, so your, your idea here is that you shooting at her is going to stop her from shooting at people? Is that the, the idea? Also that hopefully the extra damage that I'm applying, that's because she, I believe during Valk she heals constantly. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's hopefully stabilizing her health so that when my teammates do hit her, and they have been, that she would potentially just die outright, eliminating the ult from the fight as well. So it's the so- same concept that we've been going over, right? Is Mercy, when she starts Valking, is an incredibly difficult target to kill, right? She can just fly away from... She has very high mobility. She can fly very high up in the sky out of your range and out of your team's range, right? Like, look at your team comp currently. She can fly out of Moyer's range. She can fly out of Hog's... Mo- mostly Hog's range. She can fly... Oh, sorry. I'm looking at the wrong team. Uh, your team is the blue team. My bad. So, uh, so... Uh, what are you saying? Baptiste and Hanzo are the only ones that could reasonably... Like, yeah, exactly. Hanzo. So Baptiste and Hanzo are the only ones who can reasonably do damage, and then is it reasonable that, you know, uh, they're able to kill her when she has, like, high mobility, when she has self-healing, when she can uh, just instantly get, like, you know, fly up in the air and get out of range of everyone? I'd say she's a very difficult target to kill. Like, when she's in Valk, she probably, on their team, she probably is equivalent to around, like, one of their tanks in difficulty to kill, right? Right. Um, so therefore, yes, you can go for her if you see that she's low. You can go for her if you see that your team is shooting at her and you, you see that she's being focused fired right so if you see your your hanzo hit land the shot on her then go ahead and shoot at her right if you yeah. see that you have an opportunity to kill her go for it if you see that she's trying to go for a res shoot at her right because she's now yeah, sl- she's significant yeah exactly but if none of those apply then probably not a person we want to be looking at because in this situation she just gets away for free and we didn't really accomplish very much right shooting at her no I actually believe it's the Baptiste that she just killed that actually was shooting at her, so yeah, that's my man. <laughs> yeah, that was a panic panic dive to try to get away to a um, health pack, basically. <laughs> I was upset with this. This was a whole bit that I was trying to hopefully be able to counter the Reaper because I'm fairly good at Roadhog in some... A lot of games where it's like I know how to one tap people pretty good, like, even stuff like Reapers. I know of a main friend who mains Roadhog and he's confident, like, no, you can't one bang Roadhog. It's like, oh no, you can very easily. I pick Hog to counter Reaper all the time. Mm. All right. um, so I would probably do try to do that because I was noticing I wasn't getting enough value anymore on Winston. Mm-hmm. So, but I didn't play it for long. Yeah, so here, notice that okay, so. In this situation, um, this gets into flicking. So flicking, not not sure if we talked about that last time at all. Maybe, maybe no, not. No, no, no. Yeah. So flicking 
essentially, right? You there are times where flicking is necessary, times where flicking is not necessary. Flicking is anytime your crosshair needs to travel somewhere very, very fast, right? And your crosshair needs to travel somewhere very, very fast if it's a fast-moving target. So, like, let's say there's a tracer blinking around you. Your crosshair is going to need to travel fast. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to catch the tracer. You need to flick to if somebody, like, sneaks up behind you. Or if, like, you're aiming down here, up, down lane, and then all of a sudden you uh, see somebody pop up on your right side of the screen. So, you have to flick over to the side to look at them and to shoot at them. Um, yeah. But flicking is not necessary if you're already staring straight at the person or very close to at the person because then flicking does really nothing except for just make your shot less accurate and it's going to make it like if you're already aiming at the person it just adjusts you off of the target so when you're already aiming at somebody or very close to the person then flicking might not even be necessary when you can just uh, adjust to them right and not need to go for that very fast movement so here notice how we're on the oh, we're basically on the reaper and then we do very f fast flick to the right and then that just messes with our our ability to land that hook accurately so i'd recommend uh just paying attention to when is flicking necessary when is it not this is a situation where probably it is not necessary to be going for and then therefore that just messes with our ability to land the hook that's actually good information that I did not know. Mm -hmm. that, that That's the purpose of flicking. Yep. Yeah, at this point we were just fighting for what we could because they were yep. already a dominant position on the point. And then that's where I go back to Winston, I believe. Is this no, the... No. You haven't seen this yet, no. Yeah. It's so, a second that you joined. So was it on the second attack that you had, or this attack that I reach, that I joined? The second attack. Second attack. Okay. Oh, that's an opportunity. Uh, so we didn't notice it, but there, the on their team, Hanzo gets down to one HP here, right? Oh, I up on the know. high ground, right? Oh. So if we currently, right, and then on top of that, notice that there's only three people on high ground, right? So if we leap to high ground here, we get a kill, and then we bubble, and then is Sigma and Mercy alone gonna be able to? finish us off no no so this no, is just like if i need to get out i'll be able to get out mm -hmm. yep so this is just a free kill right there that we just end up missing because we're not paying attention even possibly like probably wouldn't we wouldn't be able to but we'd be able to get sigma and mercy decently low before we're forced to back up as well so very open opportunity there make sure we're keeping our yeah. eyes open and watching for it okay uh Hog as well, there is possibly an opportunity just because he's lower. If we jump over and like bubble him, then that isolates him and makes it so that he can't actually heal and get healed by his team or get healed by his teammates, is what I'm getting at there. Um, we do leap to high ground here though. Once again, we're bubbling a little bit too early because so watch that bubble because you can bubble like while you're leaping and then you leap outside of it. So there that happens again, and that means that bu you know, bubble doesn't do very much. Turn All back, right. we won't get headshot, but then it was too late. Yeah, so we pushed just a little far, far there. Once we push him off the high ground, our job is accomplished, right? We don't need to push. Like, we want to now be resetting, waiting for our abilities. We can't really do anything here, right? You see five people staring at you. you it's not like you can really get on anybody here. You don't really have an opportunity to do anything. So, therefore, we probably want to be backing up, but we press too far forwards, which makes yeah. it so that we end up dying. We also get stuck on something, unfortunately. And then we jump, and then we don't leap as well is another thing there. So making sure we're using leap as an escape. So I think I jumped as I was trying to get away in order to prep for a leap because I do already jump before leaping. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was too late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I, I made the decision to go back too late. Mm -hmm. Looking for targets, dodging that dragon. And seeing, okay, Hanzo is poking at the back, but there's no team at the moment to back me up. I tried to bail out Mercy because she didn't fly with me. I do believe she ends up dying for this. No, that's another woman. And I have paid attention to your jump punching tutorial, as you hopefully yeah. noticed that I try to punch as late as possible before I land, but zapping still. Yeah, that's good. Alright, so we it jump. It worked out great when I learned that. It worked <laughs> out really well. Yeah, I'm glad.
All right, so here we leap in on Sigma. We start priming him off here. That's good. Probably want to swap targets though. We see uh, once again notice that we're kind of focused on their tanks here. Now we do boop hog into our team, but once again it's just kind of on tanks that entire fight. Um, additionally, it appeared as though we were priming when we didn't actually have teammates there. So let's go back a second here, take a look at what's happening. And current, Gwen, what do you say? I'm wondering why I primed that, because it wasn't like I was under a huge amount of pressure. Yeah, so it's, it appears as though we just didn't notice, right, that we are down two people. Because if we didn't notice, then I would imagine that we wouldn't prime here. Um, I, we, we've discussed how to tell whether or not you've won or lost a fight last time. Was that something we went over? Yes, we did, we did. One or two people's nope. disadvantage, uh, depending on which way it goes, and then anything else than that is no more ultimates. Yep, a two to three, yep, is going to be no more ult lost fight if, you, if you're down two, right, two to three. Um, did we discuss why it's one to two and then two to three, right? Like, why is two in the middle? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't understand the question. There. Yeah, so it's, the it goes one to two is an advantage or disadvantage, and then two to three is a one or lost fight, right? Yeah, two is yeah. in the middle of both of those, so it could go either way. Did we discuss how to tell which way it goes? No, I don't think no. so. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go over that then. Uh, as, if that'd be interesting for you to information, okay. for you to know that's probably probably be applicable. Um, yeah. So you know because there's a lot of other things that go into whether or not you're winning or losing, right? Just kill feed is not the only thing that goes into whether or not you're winning or losing, and that's mainly where this comes into play. So other things that go into whether or not you're winning or losing are going to be which team has better positioning, which team has more health, which team has more ultimates, has more abilities, which team has closer spawns, right? There's a lot of other factors that go into whether or not you're winning or losing. So you can, for example, right here in the situation, if it is current, oh, you're actually on three people. So that's a, this is 100% a lot. I didn't even notice the sign and spawn. So this is 100% a lost fight already, yeah. right? Um, but let's say let's say we did have four people. Let's say it was a four v six, right? Um, this is still winnable if their entire team is one HP, right? Yeah. Is it, this is still winnable if you know they have no ult and we have a bunch of ultimates, right? Yeah. Um, or if they have terrible positioning, we have really good positioning, right? Yeah. Um, or if we have close spawns on second point, right, and they don't have close spawns, right? Um, yeah. So these, therefore, that that those advantages can flip the fight. In fact, if we have a multiple of those stacking up on top of each other, we could sp still be winning even if it's three people. Like it could be a three v six here, and we could have a grab dragon, and their entire team is one HP, and then that's still winnable, right? So yeah. they can stack on top of each other, and it can be really impacted. But it's mainly going to impact the the two person. Now, if we come into this fight and it's a and we're down two people, and we have no additional advantages then it's a lost fight, right? So, like, yeah. we just... Usually when you walk into a fight, at the very beginning of a fight, neither team has advantages or disadvantages yet, so therefore, you, you, if you lose two people at the very beginning of a fight, you're pretty much done, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, in this situation, if we were only down two people, it would probably still be lost, because, yeah, we got ults, but so do they. And, yeah, we got health, but so do they for the most part, right? And... Yeah, we got, you know, decent positioning, but so do they, right? In fact, they might even have better positioning than us, right? So yeah. all the, there's no adv additional advantage here. So therefore, this would be lost even if it was, we were only down two people. Yeah, that is also useful information. That is, mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering about this because I've won plenty mm -hmm. of fights 4v6 as well. Yep. And I was like, uh, well, mostly in my mind, it's to do with ultimates as well as like situational mm -hmm positioning is like are they all in a choke do we have mm -hmm. specific ultimates that work well in a choke kind of thing yeah but exactly it's a little bit deeper than that still mm -hmm. yep so it, it even like the last time we were just going over that kill seed that's the basics that's just how to generally understand it for the people who don't understand the concept at all like i've had people who just like you know they'll go in an ult when they're it's a 1v6 right um yeah. so that's the basics for people who just don't understand it at all this is a little bit more in depth for that second intermediary level and then it can yeah. probably it can most likely just get even more complex than this right than what we've discussed because like we this like we said you could still win even if it's a if it's a 3v6 sometimes you can still win even if it's a 2v6 right it just really heavily depends on the situation and how many advantages do we have how many disadvantages do we have right resources across the board gonna hmm. depend on the situation can get even more complex but this is the second step up from where we were talking about last week yeah let's let's save the rest of that for later then yeah <laughs> so all right um 
All right, so here, notice that we're getting aggressive when our team's not real. Firstly, we're getting aggressive when we hear a tire, which maybe isn't the time to be, because then we can just probably get blown up by the tire and one tapped. Secondly, look at where our team is, right? Um, this is no longer space that we're creating, because who are we creating the space for? No one. Right. So I do, I do, they were closer by, and I should have mm -hmm. done this. And also, uh, on the tire thing, I actually, personally, that this might be completely wrong, and please tell me, mm -hmm. when there's a tire going out, I actually do like going for a gaze like this, because most of the time, it draws the attention of the enemies more so on me, allowing my team to focus attention on the tire, mm -hmm. potentially destroying it before it gets any value. Yeah, so... That's definitely a pl like could be applicable depends on the situation. But here, if your team is sitting in in your spawn, is the enemy team really a big distraction? No. No. And then you being here maybe gives you the ability to bubble and shoot at it as well and help your team destroy the tire. I've actually never successfully dismantled the tire by bubbling it. I've been practicing on diva bombs by bubbling the bombs, and that's been really going well, but not for Yeah, parties. so not necessarily, you can't necessarily, like, it's probably going to be pretty difficult to just, like, you know, bubble it in the same way you bubble a diva bomb. Like, you bubble and then, like, leap out of it, and then just the, because it'd be unlikely that the junk rider would, would, would detonate press it. The bomb but it gives, but it gives your team shields to work with to like think of it like they're able to shield dance with it. I'm assuming you know what shield dancing is because I've seen you do it. Yes, I, yeah, I, yeah, I'm very aware of shield dancing. Yep. So it would give your team the ability to shield dance with the tire as well as just open up for a lot more opportunities for the junk rat to accidentally mess up and it splits your team up. So like if you're all grouped up on top of each other, it can't just kill everybody. It only maybe kills one or two. All right. So it, things like that. So I, I, it's unlikely that you just get it smack dab in the middle and Junkrat completely fails it, right? You're not going to cont completely contain it, but it gives your team a lot more options for staying alive. Yeah, makes sense. A little bit more thinking about that situation for the future. And here I noticed that two people died, so I drop off and I wait for his hook. But it was too late because I knew the hook was already looking at me and I didn't want to get hooked as I was flying away. Mm -hmm. Because that, had, that was actually happening surprisingly a lot in gold still. <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, clicked. Why is it? Uh oh. I don't know. It wasn't letting me click in. Alright. Alright, so I noticed, our, I noticed that one of ours got picked up, but then I noticed that we also got a pick back, mm -hmm. which is what led me to actually still go in. And at this point, I thought, okay, let's just draw them back, hopefully. I get the hog, I get the Moira and the Mercy, and I was hoping that was enough, and it was. And it was. So in this situation, um, for, notice that we don't really pay attention to the Moira who fades behind us. I did not know this, and not even until you just told me this. Yep. So ways that we know this. Firstly, we see the Moira fade, so we are thinking in our head, well, where the heck is she fading to? So, you know, she can only fade in a couple directions here. Every other direction is in front of us, so if she fades in front of us, then we see it. If not, she's behind us, right? So that's first yeah, first thing. That's, that's a good one. Yep. Secondly, right, we can see that there's damage ticks coming from behind us, right? So we can see on right underneath your crosshair okay. here that there's damage directionally coming from behind us. You also see those damage markers coming from the like the sides of your screen. Right now it's not displaying. Let's see, will it display? Um, yeah, so if you look at the bottom right, it's very tiny, but if you if you look at the bottom right, you'll see a little bit of a, a red marker. Um, yes. They will show that we're taking damage from the back right of us. Same thing with our right underneath our crosshair. It'll show we're taking damage. You can also hear that you're taking damage. You also see on your health bar that you're taking damage. And we're inside of our bubble, so we're thinking, well, there's no one in front of us in our bubble. No one. So someone's behind us in our bubble, right? Um, mm -hmm. You can also hear that she's there and shooting at you. Last time, did we discuss all your sound settings or not? Nah? We did, and we, did, yep. uh, we got to the point where audio was a bit of a problem for me due to a hearing issue. Oh, right? yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so then it in that situation... This is no excuse. <laughs> yeah, then, then in the situation, you have the a lot of visual information as well that are letting you know that there's more behind you, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we also... So we see all that. That's the main things, right? Now we see, see Moira. <laughs> we, we still <laughs> don't look yeah. at her. <laughs> oh, it's a bit embarrassing, that one, yes. Yeah. I still don't even know that she's dead. <laughs> she's still yep. alive at this point. Yep. I believe that she doesn't die there. There she goes. It took a while. <laughs> Alright. 
Just pay attention to the things that can uh, stop you from moving, and then keep in mind that you do have a fair amount. Well, maybe to show this next time we go to the uh, training range, but you do have a very fair amount of mobility while you're in the air, so you don't always yeah. have to leap in an exact straight line. You can leap and do twists and turns and go left and right and backwards while you're in midair, which means that you here in the situation, like, even if we leap and, like, while we're leaping, we go, oh, there's something in the way, we can just move to the left around it, right? And then that way we don't just get booped down, right? And we can I get a full duration. I actually Good. know this. The, um, uh, the, the only way I apply it myself so far is with the mouse still, because I'm still very not used to using WASD yeah. to direct that movement, even yep. though I know it's possible. Mm hmm something to work on yep something just start implementing start thinking about yep get aggressive go 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 uh don't yeah, I start was this because i panicked i did not see yeah. the jugger immediately die <laughs> but i thought i'm trapped now this is going to be really messy in a second mm -hmm. but he dies yep so Ming, you're just paying attention to our environment you also see me looking around like, hey, where, why am I not taking any damage? <laughs> the Junker's dead. He's not there. Notice, just as, kind of notice the instinctual level that we need to kind of work on. Like, it says, you're, you're not going to have this for a little bit, because of course you need to start working on your conscious level, and then that'll work to it being a habit, and then you'll start, it'll naturally come. But notice how we naturally... We leap on a Hanzo and a Sigma, and then we naturally start shooting at the Sigma rather than the Hanzo, right? So we, instead of trying to look around for where the Hanzo is, who we know is just, you know, right behind us, <laughs> right? I was, looking, I was looking towards the right, though. Yeah. Like, so, where the hell is he? But, yeah, so yeah, in this situation... I, I lose track of him. Yeah, so in this situation, like, sometimes when people, like, lose track, um, I, I, I almost think, well, he's only, there's only so many places he can be, right? And that is 360. Right, so all you have to do when we lose track of somebody is just do a 360 and then we find them. So a lot of times when people lose track, it's just because they are staring straight forwards and they're like, oh no, person is not on my screen anymore, right? Um, so make sure that when you do lose track of somebody, then instead of just going, oh no, person's not on my screen anymore, that we're just doing a quick 360 and just like looking around, right? Um, that way we can just check where's Hanzo at. And then if you don't See them after a quick 360 and like, you know, maybe they use a movement ability or maybe we, they're like yeah, above yeah. us or something yeah. like that. Then in those situations, that's fine to go and look at somebody else. But this one's, you know, pr fairly simple like because we, cause we jump on them and we actually see that we leap pat like we, 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 we see them go to the left side of our screen and then we just I was turn, actually like, surprised yeah. because I was expecting him to go forward because I bumped him. But yeah. I figured he must have used his air dash thing to yep. stop momentum of that. Yeah. Which is really good of him. I did not expect that. Alright. So let's rewatch this for half a second. So we shoot at the shoot at um Junker comes out. Ah, uh, that's un unfortunate. Alright. Yeah, I was sticking on the hook because I saw he was very low. That's yeah. the only reason why I stuck on him. So this is where I joined in? Yeah? Was it like at the very beginning here? It was, yeah, it was pretty much here. Like somewhere yeah, around right. this area. Yeah, and yeah. I jumped down and here's where you joined mm -hmm. pretty much. Yep. So that's fine then. That's that one reviewed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and link up the next one. If we have, yeah, if we still have time for more. Oh, uh, yeah. We... Uh, we'll have, yeah, we'll have like a, a good two minutes or so. Or not two minutes or so. Uh, three, you know, uh, that's questionable. Go ahead and link it. <laughs> We'll, 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 like, we'll have a little bit. We'll just go back to tech in the training grounds because I believe that you still have some things there that you want to. Yeah, I just had the, I just had the one air movement thing, and then that was I'm pretty sure it if I'm not, if I'm recalling that correctly. So. I think so. Yeah. And then oh, that's the wrong place to enter that. And this was a Numbani game. Uh, where I think we ended up losing, but it was looking pretty good towards the start of it. Mm -hmm. Except this decision right here. <laughs> this was not, and the bubble again too early as well. Yep, bubble was the main thing there. Not a bad decision if not for the if not for the bubble, right? Well, if I thought like diving to damage dealers as well as a mercy pocketing them. Yeah, this, this is not going to do much for me because because this is. 
this is the the big thing is that we uh, like here the the only thing is that like we actually get shot like at right as we're leaping so in this situation if we see them um we notice how we peek this side which makes yeah. it so that they can instantly shoot it at us and they can shoot us the entire time we're jumping whereas if we go this side well now we can just go do 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 all right i'm on top of you right so yeah. cover usage as we're engaging here big thing um, Are you specifically saying don't always just drive straight from where they're looking, dive from the side as best you can? Uh, not necessarily. It. It's more so the cover usage. They were not talking well, about yeah. So, yeah. But it, it plays into the same idea, where it's like the longer they spend not looking at you or while you're behind cover, the less damage you'll take yes. before you actually get mm -hmm. Yep. So here we only get shot at because we peek down this long angle, and then that means that we take a bunch of damage. Once we're up here, like it's not a major oh. problem that we leap here. We mess up the bubble because here. All we have to do is just in drop instantly, and then we're on the health pack, and then we're fine, right? I, the trouble was on the ledge. I was hoping for it, which is why I stayed a little bit longer. <laughs> but I see it's dropping too far, and then like, oh. Yeah, so, so we so we misuse the co cover there, and we don't misuse the bubble, and then that's the main reason why we die. Yeah. Okay. We're currently down two people. Or, no, more than two people, our entire team. Uh, probably not the time to be engaging. Pay nope. attention to your kill feed and what's happening, because you know you can see your team is all dead when we're engaging there. I and just took the so the reason behind this because I actually remember thinking about this. Uh, one of the things you said also in a lot of videos that you produced, as well as in coaching with me, is like uh, APK always tried to be, to be doing something extra permitted kind of thing. And so, I was trying to still create pressure somewhere so that hopefully when they do come back, actions, there's a bigger chance that there's yeah. less people looking forward so that they have an easier time getting in there as well. Actions per minute is null and void if it's in between a fight and you're a tank that has no long distance shooting. So okay. here in this situation, right, um, you honestly just have to wait for your team. You could be using that time to rotate. Like, so actions per minute doesn't always necessarily mean that you have to be going in and shooting at things. That's not no, necessarily what I just... I was trying to set up, like, distractions. Yeah. Like, look at me, I'm going behind you, la, la, la. Yeah, so yeah. other things that that could mean is, like, actions per minute just means no downtime where you're just sitting there not thinking about anything. Um, it couldn't just be as simple as press tab, I'm pressing tab, I'm looking at who's the easiest, hardest thing to kill. I'm pressing tab, I'm looking at team comps, and I'm looking at... Uh, our ultimates, and I'm thinking about how I'm going to approach the next fight. Um, it could be rotating for the next engagement. Here, this I would say that's maybe not a... Like, you distracting isn't accomplishing anything because of how far back your team is. The fight is not engaged, therefore you're just, you distracting isn't really doing very much here. Um, go ahead, what are you saying? It's, it's functioning as a tree for their ultimates, basically, at that point. Yeah, exactly, and then it's on. It's just mean, meaning that we're taking extra damage, and then now we can't really engage when our team is engaging. Um, now, if you were like a tank that could, you, if you could just spam from a distance, then that that'd be fine. Like your roadhog, you're just peeking, shooting in some shots. That's fine. But monkey, here in the situation, you just have to sit there and, and wait for your team. You can't really go and do things because now we're engaging, probably when our team w without health, right, and when our teams. I guess no. I guess we did sync up with our team, but main yeah, thing is that we're just without health. To see if my team was already doing stuff, and then I went for the battle. Yeah, main thing is that it's just without health, and it was just yeah. kind of unnecessary, you know. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Mm. All right, so come back to the main menu. Uh, you already get the movement thing, right? We want to go right side here. We leap. I guess you, move right side, right? right. Press, press right, right, look right. Um, besides that, moving on. Cool abilities uh and then mo most of that we'll do a quick review because most of this will be in the notes anyways right um yeah. abilities jump we talked about some different jump techs right short jump especially was one of the big ones um besides that uh bubble usage make sure that we're waiting we almost always whenever we jump to a high ground we bubbled too early and then just went back there um, quite with that. yep so make sometimes sure keep it goes it. always well sometimes it goes bad every time it's yep. consistent so that one Yep, so make sure we're working on that. And then mm -hmm. besides that, I think that's about it with your abilities um, for the most part. So overall, ability usage probably went to like a probably low to medium to medium, somewhere around that range, priority for you to work on. Then moving on to your ultimate usage. Ultimate usage, making sure that we're just working on pretty much all aspects of it, right? Making sure we're working on... It's just on, a big thing. I think ultimate yeah. usage is a big thing. Mm 
Mm -hmm. we'll yep. So probably probably gonna be at like a medium priority or so, right? This is one of those things because it, it's gonna come up a, a little bit more rarely than some of the other ones, but it's still important to work on. Um, working on short jumping so we can juggle people easier, pinning people in the corners, making sure we're not randomly swapping between people. Uh, target priority within it, which we'll go over in a minute. Um, making sure that we are just looking to use leap more often, right? And then those are kind of some of the core main ones. Um, don't use them in one or lost fights, right? That's that's going to be a no bueno. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Overall, medium priority. Now, don't know if we talked about this. I don't think we would have talked about this last time. But um, when it comes to, we, we talked about focusing on things last time, right? And improving yes. upon them. And we talked about focusing on one category or one or three smaller things within a category. Yep. Yeah, so at selection, basically. What are the best things for me to be hitting? What would cause the most damage and potentially easiest speed to kill? Yeah, yeah. So that that's what we talked about as as the main point for you to be working on, right? But we we talked about yes. that. That's how that's the application process, right? Um, yeah. To go more in depth on that, um, you can work on different things if they're very un um, unrelated, not unrelated. Um, they don't overlap at all. So, for example, think about your primal usage. You're only primaling once every for ten seconds every like two minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. In comparison to something like mechanics that we talked about last time, which is going to be a all the time during the game thing. Right. Yeah. So the, your primal usage doesn't really overlap with that very much because you're using it so rarely. Therefore, you can probably do both in the game. Right. So you just swap over from I'm use uh, f focusing on mechanics to primal when primal comes up. Right. Um, yeah. Whereas you wouldn't be able to do, I'm going to focus on mechanics and positioning because those two are both overlapping throughout the entire game, right? So therefore, that would be overwhelming and too difficult to go on. So primal, that's something you could probably do at the same time as some of the other things that you're doing, right? That makes sense. So um, moving, that was a medium priority. Moving on real quick, we're running out of time here. So um, mechanics, we didn't know mechanics a monkey, but there is target priority shooting at the uh, squishies and not the tanks and thinking about who's easiest to kill. Um, besides that, um, just watching for opportunities when people are low and out of position within this as well. Um, I guess this goes a little bit into like aggression not, not so much i guess we'll we'll put it within mechanics i guess uh trying to think I guess falls under game awareness aggression 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 is is its own category that is sometimes i apply to people aggression is paired with um awareness so that because those two go directly together so we'll just pair those two, two together i'll go get in that in a second overall target priority is probably like a low medium maybe a medium for you to work on something along those lines um then moving on you have positioning positioning making sure you're using cover and then besides that honestly not very many other problems with it not very big issues with it low to medium priority right not very much um From what you remember of the zen review and the break review would you say the performance on the winston on average like assuming this is an average game that you just watched with yeah. me that this would be better or worse? If because if your positioning was number two last time, and positioning probably is going to be one of the lower lowest ones here, then probably your positioning in Monkey was much better. Yeah, mechanics not, positioning awareness were the top three yeah, last year. Not, not too sure if that means that overall your positioning got better, or if you're just Monkey positioning got better. Or, or is better in general, right? Because they're two different kind of yeah, types yeah, of positioning. Yeah, yeah so... Mm -hmm. Sorry, go on. Yep. Then moving on to awareness slash aggression. These uh, are two basically separate categories, but they pair together um, because they're so interrelated. You can't know how, when you should be getting aggressive if you don't know what's going on around you. Um, then aware, ag awareness, pay attention to your health bar, request healing when you're low. It's good to have to get into. Pay attention to what's happening in kill feed. What's all the different things that go into whether or not you're winning or losing. What's happening around me? Where's my team at? Where's the enemy team at? keeping your ears open as best you can and then also making sure that we're paying attention to visually to what's going on around us right all the different indicators we have of directional damage and whatnot 
and then applying all those things to our gameplay, paying attention to team comps still, right? How do they dictate our play style? And then accordingly, adjust your adjust your aggression, right? Within aggression, think about hard diving versus soft diving, right? Hard diving is intentionally going in for the kill. A lot of the times that means using your leap and using your bubble. Uh, soft diving is diving with the intention of creating space. That means that a lot of times that you will not be using your leap and you can use your bubble, right? That that, that one's fine to use. Um, and then uh, that's about it. Overall, that one probably goes to like a medium, mm, possibly a medium high, but somewhere around that range, right? Um, so overall, let's put that all in order real quick. Number one probably goes to that, uh, to awareness slash aggression, right? Just because it's two big, you know, two categories combined into yeah. one there. Um, it's, very, it's a Winston as a call hero anyway, because yeah. identifying what you can and can't do is very important in Winston because yep. otherwise you're just a bag mm -hmm. that you jump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then number two is probably going to be your primal usage. Number three, or your ultimate usage. Number three is probably going to be your probably tied around the same similar amount for your ability usage and your target priority, right? And then finally, last comes your positioning to work on. Okay, that all making sense. Any questions about anything? Yeah, no, I actually, I'm fairly pleased with this one because I feel that this time, by pure coincidence, we got a much better average game to review where I make some good decisions, and I think you saw that, but I also make some decisions that don't make sense in the moment. Mm -hmm. And yep. then it's holding me back. Yep, you got it right there. So uh, I'm going to stop.